Welcome to Behind the Tools. Here's Tradeify CEO and your host, Michael Steckler. Hi everyone, welcome to the Behind the Tools podcast uh, from Tradeify. Uh, it's me, Michael from Tradeify, and uh, I'm delighted this week that we've got Amy Barrett Singh, known to many of you as Amy the Sparky, uh, joining the show. Amy, hi, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. It's lovely to uh, chat with you. Uh, and Amy is our, um, dare I say it, third influencer that we've had on the show. Um, it's a tight-knit uh, community. So we've had uh, Jordan from Artisan Electrics, um, and then we had Bundy uh, on, our, on our first show. So um, Amy's built up a really um, big following of people across Instagram, YouTube, and actually has a podcast focused on women in trades as well. So really glad to have you on the show. And Amy's based in, um, for those that know, Packington in Leicestershire in the UK, uh, and the only reason I know that place is because it's near a, a place called Ashby de la Zouche, which is probably one of the best town, is it a town or a village, Village really, names in the, in yeah, the UK? Yeah, it's a town where everybody, whenever I say, I never say Packington because no one's ever heard of it. I say Ashby de la Zouche. You do say Ashby de la Zouche. Yeah. 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 Well, so it's right it's between, yeah. It does. It's a really sort of, it, it's a very French sounding um, village name and it's right between, so everyone who wants their bearings, it's kind of, um, I would say it's fair to say it's between Birmingham and Nottingham, um, yeah. or Leicester and Nottingham really, uh, in terms yeah. of, of location in the UK. Um, and it has a pub called the Bull and Lion, which by reputation <laughs> is the only Bull and Lion in the entire country. Did you know it that? It does, how do you know that? <laughs> yeah, I t look, I just, you know, the wonders of the internet, I do a little bit of uh, research <laughs> beforehand. I have never... I'd like to say I've been to the Bullen Line because it's the only one in the UK, but I, I haven't. So um, next time I'm driving through Ashby de la Zouche off the A42, I will pop into the Bullen Line. Um, <laughs> anyway, is it a good pub? It's a lovely little pub, yeah. It's, it's oh. nice. It's got a nice little garden to it. So yeah, I can, uh, when the weather's like this, it's lovely. Take the dog down there, sit out in the garden. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, so maybe to start, Amy, do you want to give a brief background of, you know, your business, um, what you do, and, and kind of also I've been intrigued as to sort of how you got into the trades and what prompted you to become an electrician? Um, well, I wanted to do it for a little while, just didn't have the um, confidence. Um, I, I thought about it, sort of toyed with the idea when I was younger, and I thought, no, because no... I didn't know any women in, in any trade and I just didn't see it as an option for me. I just thought women don't do it. Um, and my granddad was a plumber and, and I used to think, oh, I'm going to do that. We, we were really close. Um, yeah. And then as we grew up, I sort of forgot about it. And uh, both of my brothers are electricians. Um, and yeah, I, I always had an interest in it, but just didn't think, or I wasn't brave enough um, to go to college and train and, and, and all that. Um, and then, yeah, I had... Uh, sort of a year out of normal life when I was about 28. I uh, went traveling for a year, I did lots of, you know, exciting things and I came back and I thought, do you know what, I can actually do anything. And um, yeah. I didn't really tell anyone, I just went to college, I just joined college. Um, and yeah, I trained full time for two years to get my level one, uh, level two, level three. Uh, and, then I, and then I was really lucky that when the week I was finishing my course, I got a job um doing some commercial work uh did that for a little while and then i've moved to a load of new build houses and then i've just i've done mainly domestic for like a couple of years yeah. um i absolutely love it i wouldn't i wouldn't change it for the world now great and, um, and what what made you become you know the story about your um grandfather being a plumber what made you pick sort of being an electrician with that in mind uh, was there a driver for that uh, I've got uh, ACD and I can't touch toilets. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, oh, and, and when I researched it, I looked and I thought, I don't think it's for me. I just don't think uh, I can do it. And and then, you know, listening to my brother's talk um, about electrics and um, when my older brother was training, he was, we were also living at home. So I used to, you know, see things right. that he was doing. Yeah. And that's really interesting. Um, and yeah, so I thought, right, I'll have a look at that. And when I researched that, I thought, yeah. And then I, as we grew up and, and uh, I saw how much they were earning, I thought, <laughs> I'll have a slice of that pie. <laughs> yeah, and so, so is, a bit, is there a bit of competition between you and your brothers? <laughs> Not really. Honestly, the, the pair of them, the, I mean, my older brother's been doing it, uh, it must be 20 years. 
Um, and the younger one, I don't know, maybe 12. And they're absolutely flying. Like, they're very ambitious. Um, they, they moved out, because we're all from the Midlands, obviously, but they yeah. moved uh, down to, London, like, just north of London. And they started their own businesses there and they're absolutely flying. Their businesses have grown really well. I, I'm no competition, <laughs> competition for them that, you know, uh, yeah. So did, did that, encu- did that encu- seeing them do that, did that encourage you to sort of get into it? Is that part yeah. of the, yeah. Yeah. To see how um, successful they've been and, you know, that it's, it's doable. I mean, they've worked hard. I've seen them, you know, work hard. They've put the hours in. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, they're they're reaping the the rewards now, so it's fair play to them. Yeah, and then for you personally, sort of doing that and starting in, in business and becoming an electrician, what was the biggest challenge um, when you when you decided oh, to go down that path? Uh, definitely trying to get people to take you seriously. So yeah. um, your your colleagues. So first you know, looking for a job, trying to get an employer to take you seriously, to, to look at you and think, yeah, she, she might be able to do it, I'll give her a go. Um, so that's your first challenge, then you get a job. Um, well, for, well, college, first of all, with the students right. trying to get them to take you seriously, then you go through it with getting, you know. So it really, really it, started, it started at college? You're saying that even, even the people taking the courses to get you through at college, um, yeah had some level of Im- implicit bias the, the fact that you were a woman yeah some some of them were really supportive i think some of them yeah. thought well this girl she's she, a woman she's 28 years old or yeah i think i was 28 um she's you know paying out of her own pocket for this course she's going right. to be the only female in the whole college she must really want it um uh, and that that's how it was and, and they were you know really good to me and anyone else that I had a doubt i think i pretty much put them but I'm right after a, <laughs> a couple of weeks. Um, but then, yeah, I went through the same thing, um, uh, getting getting a job. And then yeah. your colleagues, uh, I've only, I've only ever had a couple that have been an absolute nightmare um, to work with. And most, most people, most men, 99% of men I work with are so supportive. They've been absolutely great. You know, they've made the journey easy for me. Um, really helpful always there to give me you know advice or tips on stuff if i'm if i'm struggling with something you know they've been really supportive but you always get it's like everywhere in life you get you know the other person that's um right you know negative and doesn't doesn't want to help you um yeah and then also customers sometimes you get um get customers that are a challenge because they assume it's the stigma, isn't it? They just assume that you're not going to be as good as a man. So you right. turn up to a job, they don't know it's you. Say I've been sent by uh, my boss. They don't know that it's female. And they open the door and you can see on their face, they're like, oh. You know, I have people say to me, oh, you're a woman. And oh, like, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've discussed this on my podcast with uh, quite a few of the girls and they say the same thing. They've, they've had people, some of the girls have had people say to them, um, no, you're not coming out. I don't want you to do it. Send me a man. Um, you know, so that that's the challenge, just getting people to accept you. And we've also said that, you know, most of us, I think all of us have said that we always feel under pressure. You, when you're working, you're constantly under some sort of pressure to try and be even better than you think a man <laughs> would be. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, you feel like you're, yeah. all, you're constantly trying to prove yourself because any little mistake you make or anything you do wrong, immediately the customer will think, oh, it's because she's a woman. Right. And, and is that, is that, and do you think that, and that's still the case? Is that still sort of happening on a, on a. I, I think it happens now, yeah. And, and the, girls, those... the other girls I've spoken to, they, they say the same thing. And do people change their, I mean, do people change their perception after you've done the work? I mean, or is... Yeah, often, or, or, or while, you're, while you're doing it, um, they can see that you're capable. And, you know, when you're finished and you've done a good job, they're quite happy. And I've had people where they started off and I thought, oh, they're going to be a nightmare. And I could tell that they didn't really want me there. And then a week later, I've had a phone call saying, oh, so-and-so has recommended you. And I thought, well, right. let's go. Uh, 
much. And do you, do, you, do you think that's what will change that type of behavior over time is just getting more women into, into trades and it just being more commonplace? Do you think that's the issue? What's the... Yeah, yeah. I think when it becomes just more normal, you know, when the... the you know, when trade is diluted more by women, then it's just a, a normal. We, we won't get that, will we? You know, we won't get that over the door and go, oh, you're a, you're a woman. It will just be, hello. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, I think just because, you know, this the figures are so, the numbers of uh, female traders are so small at the minute. Um, it's still quite shocking to some people, especially... Um, the, the older generation. I was going to, that was my next question. Do you feel this is still a, this is a generational shift? I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, some, some of this is, yeah. you know, yeah. Is that, I is think, that part of the challenge with older customers? I think so. Yeah. With, 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 with the older generation. And I think it will naturally just, you know, improve. And I think the figures, I think um, the amount of female trade traders will rise slowly. And also, I think naturally, um, customers' sort of opinions on, on I, don't, I can't think of the word. It would just be so, it would just be normal, won't it? It would just become yeah. normal. Yeah, it feels, so, I mean, I, I, hate to generalize, I hate to generalize and say it's an older generational problem because I'm sure, you know, you can't say that every older person, I think about my parents, I don't think they would, um, you know, my dad's pretty traditional, but I can't imagine him opening the door and being bothered about the, the gender of someone coming to do work. And he, he just wanted to get the work done and be happy that someone was yeah. there to do it, to be honest. So, um, but, you know, needless to say, it sounds like there is still some issues around that. Um, and then, you know, one of the other things, so it feels like, yeah, there is there aren't enough women in trades. Uh, it's changing. I mean, do, do you have a sense of, as a percentage, what it would be today in the UK, if you look at the UK as a market? Um... I can't remember what it was, but I think for overall working on the tools, it was something mad like five percent. So it's still really, really small, yeah. Because you, you mentioned what, a comment um, about college. So, sorry, with with electricians in in actually on the tools, I think it's three percent in the UK. Three percent. Wow, so it's really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you you touched on when you were at college, you were the only only woman on that on that course so I guess that's a reflection of that and do you think that's part of the challenge is trying to attract um you know younger people to sort of take the trades as a career path seriously definitely uh, six years ago I started college and I was the only female uh, that was in Tamworth I was the only female in the whole of that college um, and I recently uh, literally a few weeks ago spoke to a guy from a college um in London and which he was saying how you know how do you think we can encourage more women into right. it and um i said well how many have you got this year and he said we've got 650 students and yeah. zero females oh zero, zero. Oh, zero. Yeah. so it was like just one would be nice and yeah i think i i, I I think we need to go way back to like we need to start at you know like primary school we yeah. need to start putting the idea into little girls heads that this is a possibility you can do this and last uh, last week or week before I had Lisa Malloy on the my podcast she wrote a book called Molly in Construction oh I listened to that yeah yeah yeah, and she's got another one coming up, coming out uh, soon, hopefully, about um, all the different trades. Uh, and there's going to be some females in that. And she wants it, you know, to get into every primary school, just to, you know, start planting that seed really early yeah. on. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, something for little girls to think about as they're growing up, rather than... Because even at, at, at college age, I think by the time you've got to 16 and you're leaving school and thinking about what you're going to do, it's often, if someone suddenly then said to you, oh, you could do this, you could be a plumber, you know, they might think it's it's all too much to think about at that, at, at that age very quickly yeah. to make that decision. It's one of those things that needs to be planted in your head and for you to think about. And also, if all your friends are going into, you know, t totally different careers, childcare and you know hair and beauty or I don't know whatever it's for you to then turn around you never mentioned it before turn around six years ago oh, I want to be a plumber it seems a bit mad so like we need to be planting that seed way earlier 
Yeah, I feel like it's, uh, I, I think it's even, you know, in general, there is a thing around, you know, I think hearing you talk about your brothers is a good example, that it's a really good business that can be built right working in the trades mm -hmm. um, that allows you, uh, not without hard work, of course, but allows you to sort of have the lifestyle of the way you want to work and be, be your own boss and all the things that come with that. And I think I'm hearing that that's a worldwide thing that I'm hearing is that, you know, um, I think many trades struggle to get more people into apprenticeships and come through that path mm -hmm. to see it as a you know, valid option. I, I, I sort of think, I don't know if you have a point of view on this, but COVID in some ways might make people reassess you know, career choices because, you know, there are careers that probably felt like careers for life at some point in time and, and yeah. now potentially aren't careers for life. And then you look at certain industries, you think if you're a doctor, you always need doctors and nurses and um, you're always going to need tradespeople, right? That's, that's sort of how I think about those sort of roles over time. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you think there's more work that can be done from an industry perspective to kind of educate people around that and the opportunities and what that can, what that can bring? Um... Yeah. Um, oh, man, sorry. I was listening probably. <laughs> well, I guess I was asking, do you think there's more to make it more aspirational to younger people to, to be like, this is a really good career choice where you can make decent money oh, yeah. and have a, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're willing to put the hours in and work hard, it, this, you know, a career in, in any trade can be, can be so, so you know, fruitful. And I think, I don't think that um, young people re realise, yeah. you know, how much money you can make, um, you know, if you're willing to put the work in. And the, I was talking to a guy, I, I mentioned it on my last podcast about the potential um, earnings difference um, over an average career. And I think, I think he used the example of between someone that worked in, uh, beauty for their whole career and then somebody that got a trade um and it was something like one million pounds potential yeah. earning difference and I, I just don't think that young people realize i think they think it's um something that you go into if you can't get a job somewhere else is there any do you think that perception is still still there is that still the case I, do, I, do, I do yeah i think if you think that you're um not academic enough to get a, a job doing something else or it's you know people that didn't make a career choice um in time or you know that was all that was left so they do it I, I honestly think that's what it is and also i know um there's a girl plumbing by rage she was um her actual name is just rachel <laughs> her instagram account is plumbing by rage yeah um she was uh, really academic, really intelligent, got amazing results through school. All she ever wanted to do was be a plumber. And she decided she was going to be a plumber when she left school. And she was really like actively discouraged um, into doing it. Like the college were telling, you know, parents were really supportive. They wanted to go and do it. But the college were literally telling her, no, you're too intelligent to do right. this job. But she was adamant and she did it. And she is absolutely smashing it. She's yeah. 23 now. She left her, finished her apprenticeship at 21. Um, bought her first house at 21 on her own from money she saved from her apprenticeship. And I think now has a 50% share of the company that she did her apprenticeship with. And she's 23 years old. Yeah, yeah. And do you... Do you which is amazing. Sorry, go yeah, I mean, do, do you think that, I think some of the stuff that you're doing across Instagram and YouTube and, and people like Plumbing by Rach, do, do you think that's the way to reach the younger generation, to tell those stories in, in that way and engage them? I think so. You know, I think, you know, teenagers don't listen to, or they don't, you know, take lectures well and stuff like that. And, you know, they that's them, isn't it? Looking at computer screens, looking at phones and that. You know, go talk, putting uh, videos on YouTube and stuff, I'd say, or at Instagram and, and whatever, stuff that they can follow is probably the way forward. Yeah. You know, a, a way to, to get through to them. Yeah, and so what, out of interest, you know, touching on that, you've, you've obviously got a pretty decent profile. You've done a great job building your reputation as Amy the Sparky um, across those platforms. What prompted you to, to do that? To start the Instagram? Yeah. Um, 
it was it I just had this photo I've been at work we were in uh, supposed to be in lockdown I was still work I was working um still well we'd had a few weeks off and then gone back um, and I just took this photo um of this job one day that I liked it just was all uh it was all had like capping on the wall it was all in really straight lines it just looked nice yeah. and I thought oh I'm gonna start an electrical Instagram because I've had my own Instagram for a few years um and I was following uh, more and more electrical pages and you know looking at all sorts of stuff and I thought I'll set up a separate one and I, I it just snowballed I set it up and you know I started following lots of people and getting I was talking to lots of people and learning lots of things and I thought this is amazing like I want it to grow I want to meet more people and then when I started to see um because I I, I didn't think there were any other female traders especially like around me yeah. um and when I started to see that you know even though it's a small percentage there are still you know quite a lot I um I thought this is amazing I'll you know start getting in touch with them and then I was on another podcast with Nick uh, Bundy um, yeah. and Sam and um, Mark from Apprentice One to One, um, and I thought I could do my own podcast, get talking to women, get information out there for you know not just women like you know school uh, leaving age lads and just get information, different routes for training, trying to you know I was thinking about the things that worried me when I went back when I went back to college and, and right. stuff and yeah to try and make people feel at ease with you know saying it is okay and you will be okay you get through it. it's not scary as you think it is once you get there it's yeah. absolutely fine and you can you know build a really successful career and yeah and did yeah. you did you start engaging with those other sort of Instagram accounts initially for tips and tricks seeing how other people do work or just for the community yeah. aspect or both yes started looking at um people's people's work and you know meshing people that looks uh, amazing like you've done so yeah. well there how have you done that and and then i start i'd get asked to do jobs um and i'd be thinking oh how do i how do i do that and i'd seen it somewhere on instagram if they did something similar i'd drop them a message and i just got talking to lots of people it, it's 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 brilliant the support um on the uh, the instagram community i i think it's brilliant Really? Yeah, it feels like it's uh, it feels like it's quite close. I was chatting to someone in the US the other day, and he actually mentioned someone who was in Australia. And it feels like there's a really like there's a really sort of burgeoning global community almost of people that you know once you get to a certain threshold in terms of followers on Instagram or YouTube or whatever it is, start to know each other, um, which I think is pretty cool. And that I think that can actually you almost want those celebrity people in the industry because I think that will be appealing then to. You know other people younger people who start to see that yeah. and see that as that see it as more aspirational and like you say they're, they're much more like spend loads more time there than they are probably at a career fair thinking about what they do next um i think that's probably yeah. what's missing is some of those sort of aspirational stories that say you know yeah it's hard work but it's you know you're your own boss um it can be really fulfilling and also there is a you know i think if you do a decent job there is a really decent living to be made at the end of it which is which is really cool and has that helped sort of grow your own personal business do, do you use it in that way um, in terms of your following across sort of YouTube, Instagram, your general presence. Would you mean for actually getting work? For actually getting work, yeah. I don't really use it for that, to be honest with you. Right. I yeah. don't actually. I'm not. I've got a few jobs through um, Instagram, but I've, for me, it's been mainly uh, like uh, jobs for myself, through like my own business. But yeah. I use it to meet people, to, to sub to people, because, you know, I look at what people are doing and I think, oh, I've not done any of that. That's really interesting. I want to learn that. And I'll drop a message and, you know, I'm not scared of asking. I'll say, oh, can I come and do a day yeah. or two with you? I really want to learn that. Um, and I've learned so much from doing that. And you, you'll find that most people, you know, are so nice. And, you know, if they can't... Um, if they haven't got time to to work with you or they don't need you or whatever then they just tell you and that's fine but you you don't lose anything from asking so for meeting people and subbing to people it's been amazing yeah yeah cool and then you know for people that are listening that you know are thinking about getting into the trades whether it's as an apprentice starting out from scratch or setting their own business up anything you've sort of learned in your experience that you know the number one thing that you would do or that did or would do differently in terms of advice um, that I do differently. 
No, I, the only things, when I think about me from the beginning, when I first went on the tours four years ago to now, for me, it'd just be personal things that I'd change. I'd just change my, um, uh, I'd be sort of not a stronger person because I think I am a strong person. I think I let people get to me at the beginning. You know, I had problems with um, some colleagues and I didn't, when I think back, I didn't react in a way that I should have done. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any of those problems now because I'm a different person. I wouldn't take any of that. I realised that it's not right and it's not acceptable. Um, right. So the only thing I would change is my attitude towards um, some people on site. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't change anything about my, like what I've done or how I've done it because it's worked for me. I've been very happy. I've, you know, I've had the opportunity to work on lots of different jobs with different people and learn lots of stuff. So I wouldn't really change anything. So your, your advice, I mean, what I'm hearing is, if, you know, if there's a, you know, a young woman looking to get into the trades or start her own business on this is, you know, don't, don't, you know, you shouldn't put up with that kind of behavior no, essentially don't, don't, call it out yeah call it yeah. out straight away and yeah. you'll find that it, you, if you do it right from the beginning um then it doesn't happen again you yeah. know if yeah. you get a, a reputation for someone that's not going to take any rubbish you don't you don't suffer with it so yeah i'd say don't take any any anything yeah anyone. that's great advice and do you and do you think that will help change things over time I think more people coming in and, and sort of calling that type of stuff out? I think women, um, yeah, calling it out uh, will slowly make those, you know, those, those few, that small percentage of people that are still trying to make life awkward for women in trades, it'll, they'll get bored of it. They'll get bored and they'll think, and other people will start, other men will start saying, there's no need for that. Um, yeah. And we'll get, we'll get more support and they'll, end up feeling so stupid they'll stop doing it and it'll stamp it all out over time hopefully and and, and, and do you generally get support you there because i you know my the general perception is that you know um it's, it's good to hear that it's not the majority do other people step in and support you in that in that type of environment other men yeah i've had yeah. i've had um uh, colleagues step in and say i mean now most of the time i wouldn't <laughs> need anyone to uh, step in and help me but I have had colleagues say oh that's out of order you know if someone's spoken to me out of order we, we've discussed this before like there's a there's a line with banter and stuff and we you know I have a lot of banter at work with my usual colleagues because we know each other um, and yeah. you know we have that relationship we can take the mick out of each other and that's fine but if you walk onto a new site in day one someone's saying really inappropriate things to you then I think there's they've crossed the line and if I don't say anything um you know so generally someone else will so yeah yeah I think it's really really good advice I agree you know I think it's great that you don't a don't put up with it but I think if there's people listening to the, you know to this podcast I'm just interested in sort of hammering that point home because I think it could start from you know someone thinking actually you know if they also um reflect on either their own behavior or that of their colleagues I think that's where you sort of tend to see a change in these things within workplaces um hopefully um cool um is there, is there anything that you wish you did know before you started your business that you know now? Well, I wish I did know. Um, again, it would just to be tougher, tough, tougher with, um, with customers as well. Um, yeah. You know, lot, things like uh, payment terms, you know, customers will drag out paying you. You know, I think I started and I was too sort of nicey nicey, like, oh they'll pay me. Yeah. I can wait for it. Um so just be tough as yeah. start as you mean to go on when you when you start your business and structure, it needs a lot of structure and planning and yeah. Start off organized and stay organized because once you get into a mess, I mean everybody will tell you in a trade the absolute worst part of the job is paperwork. Yeah. Um, once you get into a mess <laughs> with paperwork, it's one of those things that you never want to sort out. So, yeah, that's what that's what I know now <laughs> to stay yeah, on top yeah. of it. 
stay on top of that stuff. Yeah, and that's a common, and also the payment, the payment thing, or the wrong type of customers. That's a thing we commonly hear. Um, I think it's one of the yeah. one of the biggest issues. And once you're in that hole, it becomes quite difficult to and, get and, out. And of learning it. to say no sometimes as well. You know, if there's a job um, that you don't want to do, or you know, I don't. I know that I can't do everything. I've got four yeah. years' experience on the tools. I know my limits. Um, and if there's a job that I can't do, I don't say yes to it and then try and do it badly. I either say no to it or get someone to help me on it. It's, yeah, know, know your limits and so that your standard of work always stays high and you always, you know, building a good reputation. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, cool. This has been really, um, this has been great, really great conversation. I think hopefully there's any, um, younger people listening who are thinking about a career in the trades um i'm sure this will inspire them to think think differently hopefully um so we, we always finish the podcast with a handful of sort of rapid fire questions which i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you um the first one which would be i think i might know the answer but we'll see what you say is if you could pick another if you could pick another trade what would it be you weren't an electrician plumber yeah that's what i was suspecting suspecting like, you would say just yeah. like my granddad yeah 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 Plumber. Cool. Okay. And the other one is your favourite on-site lunch. On-site lunch, baby bells. <laughs> baby bells. My, my Instagram uh, uh, followers will know I've got like a really weird obsession with baby bells. Do you, have, do you, eat, <laughs> do you just just the baby bell plain? Do, do you eat it with anything or? Uh, I normally take my baby bell for like my ten o'clock snack. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I just have it on its own. <laughs> no one said no one said baby bell yet. You're definitely uh, the first the first on that one. Um, the other it's one is your favorite, favorite lunch. And um, for lunch, I always have a sandwich, but I'm gluten uh, free, so it's gluten free bread. So it's not my favorite. I just eat it because I've got it. But really, yeah. it's like eating cardboard. <laughs> so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, well, it's getting better, I hear. Gluten free bread, isn't it? It is a little bit better. You still got to have it with a drink. <laughs> you yeah. Can't <laughs> You've got to have a bottle of water or a cup of tea with it to, to get yes, it down. Yes, it's yeah. quite dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the next one was, what's your favourite or your go-to tool brand? Brand or tool? DeWalt. Or both? I DeWalt. Use, I'm DeWalt everything on my powders. Okay, cool. Um, and it's great to hear that things are, you know, opening back up. Hopefully the bullet line is open back up as well and you can do it stuff is. in the UK, which has been uh, really cool to see. Once things really start to open up and, you know, if you could go to a sporting event um, or a music event, what would it, what would it be? Um, sporting or music? I don't know. I had tickets for um, Camper Jam next month. Um, I've just had an email today to say that it's cancelled, oh. um, which is really unfortunate. I thought it'd carry on because of it being outside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not running it. So that would have been a lot of fun. That's oh, a shame. And is that because of the sort of slight uptick in the slight spike in the last week or so, a couple of weeks? Yeah, I think they've so. decided. Yeah, no, that's a shame. Yeah. Okay, well, fingers crossed that things start to get back to normal. We can do that. Um, and then the last question is: you mentioned a couple of people on this, but you know, in terms of people that you think are really interesting in the trades, um, you know, that we could speak to next on the podcast, who would you? Anyone you would recommend? Anyone I recommend? Uh, can I say two? Um, um, you can say two, one? yes. Yeah, 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 you can say two. Okay. So, uh, it, a woman would be Gina from York and Daughter. Um, she is one of the funniest people, funniest women I've ever spoken to. Uh, she's absolutely brilliant. Uh, she is, she's younger than me, I think she's 27, 28. Um, she's done an apprenticeship. Uh, as an electrician, work with her dad, um, and yeah, he's very knowledgeable, very good at a job. Cool. So yeah, she's she's brilliant. And then uh, for a guy, I'd say Matt Thomas. I don't know if you follow him. He is he's also brilliant at what he does. He's even more OCD than me, but he's very motivating and inspiring. Um, <laughs> always on the other end of the phone if you need same with Gina if I've got a problem or I need to have a rant I'll phone Gina uh, you know or if I need any advice or help you know help on a job or whatever I can phone either of them and they always pick up the phone brilliant brilliant people great cool 
Fantastic. Well, look, thanks for this. This was great. And hopefully, you know, um, things will start to change. It feels like they're moving. There's still some work to do, but it feels like they're moving slightly in the, in the right direction, which is which is good. Um, yeah. And appreciate all the work you're doing to kind of encourage and inspire um, other younger people to follow your path. So that's that's really cool. And thanks for joining the podcast. We really appreciate it. Thank great. you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thanks, Amy. And we'll chat to you Thank soon. You. Bye. Bye. And for everyone listening, um, as always, if you could rate, review, like us on Apple Podcasts, that would be greatly appreciated. Until next time, cheers. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Behind the Tools is brought to you by Tradeify, job management software for your trade business. If you enjoyed the podcast, let us know by leaving a review and be sure to tell your mates about it. Email behindthetools at tradeifyhq.com if you or someone you know would be keen to join the show as a guest.